Okay, hi everybody, Christy here from GovGirl, and I have Mark here from the Hootsuite government team. And we've been talking a lot about humanizing government presence on social media, uh, making it more than just the cold government agency, and instead there's people behind the scenes and there's life into your social media. I really liked what Hootsuite recently did in the video where you guys read a bunch of mean tweets. Hootsuite needs to be on Extreme Makeover, UI edition. <laughs> I thought it was awesome and it just reflected that, you know, you're, it's okay to make fun of yourself. Jimmy Kimmel obviously spawned the whole mean tweets thing, uh, but I think it's a cool concept, you know, you no matter where you, you see that kind of sense of humility. Uh, and what it is, it's embracing feedback that you're getting from an audience on a regular basis and not everything that is negative um, is necessarily nefarious. Sometimes you can turn negatives into positives. In talking about the trend of this human approach on social media, um, Mark, what have you observed from working with state and local clients at Hootsuite uh, over the last few years in terms of how you've seen this evolve? Look at uh, NYPD, for example, a more human voice that's out there where they're you know, trying and making a really conscientious effort for um, you know, police officers to be better connected to the communities that they serve in, and in doing so, they're trying to show sides of police officers that the community may not have seen before. Look at the Movember campaign. You know, you see a lot of different commanding officers with a lot of different um, crazy mustaches, and, and you kind of get um, to be introduced to a lot of different characters as well. So I think it's a cool way to, to add a new element to connect with your constituents. What are some of the challenges that you've seen state and local facing on social when they try to use this approach. You know, that is a challenge to make sure that you're building your community, building the people out there that you're interacting with on a regular basis, because that way when you do launch a, a hashtag campaign or there's an event that happens that's unexpected or a constituent comment, you know, instead of it being kind of latched on and owned by one particular agenda or perspective, you've got a more balanced voice out there because you have a larger community and the key to that community is, is working with them and engaging with them on a regular basis. So Mark, what do you see the public sector agencies that are doing a good job of building a large uh, following and engaging a large number of constituents on social media? Um, what are they doing well? I think be human is, is the first thing and I think that you know maybe that sounds really simple but it can sometimes be I think a little bit difficult especially with social media because it is a new way of communicating, I mean, it is really kind of the next line of communication with constituents. I think keep it relevant, keep it informative, and keep it funny and in terms of one of those three things. If you can do all three in one, well, then you're hitting a home run. One of the things I learned from being on the inside and managing government social media for some time was that having a sense of humor and being fun on social media can really grow your social media audience. It's a really effective tool. Here's one example of my favorite tweets from a police department. They tweeted, arrested a 28-year-old man today for stealing a Twilight Saga DVD box set. Store owner suggested making him watch it as punishment. So this other police uh, department says, not a scam. I love that they say not a scam. If you've committed yeah. a burglary in the area within the last week, come to our police station and claim a free iPad. <laughs> And this is all very fun, but the secret is that there's a bigger point to all of this. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're 100% right. Um, you know, you look at uh, a lot of OEMs or offices of emergency management out there, and they call the fun days, you know, the regular sort of days where there's nothing going on that's mission critical, the blue sky days. And that's really where it's an opportunity to tie in things that are fun and like we talked about before that are interesting or informative and get them out there to really engage their audience, try and link it in with different campaigns and awareness um, issues that they have, but really ultimately with a focus of you know, following those three simple things, because that way they build that community that starts to engage with them, that they're used to engaging with them, so when there is an emergency, the community is already used to reaching out to them, they already have a base there. I couldn't agree with you more, Mark, and everybody watching, if you'd like to meet Mark and the Government Hootsuite team, you can come to the 2015 Government Social Media Conference and Expo in Reno, Nevada, and you can find out more information at gsmcon.com. And uh, thanks, Mark, so much for being on a Gulf Girl video, and we'll chat soon.
Uh, thanks, Christy. It is such a pleasure to be on GovGirl. I'm a big fan. Uh, and for anybody else out there that wants to connect, uh, I'm at Hoot River on Twitter. Would love to hear from you or see you um, at the Government Social Media Conference this spring. Remind me how you say your last name. Uh, it's Ribchuk. 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 Yes. And I forgot again. Uh, Rib or rib? Ri Ribchuk. Ribchuk. I'm here with uh, Mark. <laughs> oh, one other thing I forgot to tell you. Ribchuk. 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 It's not natural at all. We're faking it. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, let, let the technology do the work. Ooh, that's above my pay grade. Everybody sees my broken phone.